Also, what it means to be black in America, folks, is to uh, have to deal with uh, people who really don't quite understand us, don't understand what we do, don't understand uh, and, and, and how important it is to, to get information right concerning us. You know, and I've worked in a lot of black media spaces, and, and I've always said that, you know what, I, I don't waste time with dealing with mainstream media on lots of stuff uh, because for me, it is about the ability for us to be able to tell our story and always say that they'll never be able to, as I put it, out black me. That's how I always put it. But what drives me crazy is when we have folks who do stories that impact African Americans and especially when we have black targeted or black owned media outlets uh, who somehow screw it up, put information out there that black people hear about and see, and then um, it's wrong. And then folks wonder, um, then people are wandering around with misinformation and then they say this, that, and the other and what, uh, you know, what happens with us. And it's just, it's, 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 it's nerve wracking. And so over the, over the, the weekend, I, I came across this story that was on, uh, that NBC News did. Um, and I don't know what platform it ran on, uh, whether it was their, um, NBC Now or whatever, but um, Issa Gutierrez was the reporter. And so um, she did this story. Now, I, I didn't actually see her story first. What I saw was um, a rewrite of her story uh, by an Alexandria Payne, I be, or Lane, I believe, on The Root, which is not black owned, a white hedge fund owns The Root, but they're black targeted, a very you know, prominent black targeted website. So what bothered me the most in w reading this story that it literally was a rewrite of the piece that was done. Like that was, that was it, there was nothing, there was no original reporting, it was a rewrite. So essentially they just took the piece that was on NBC and just rewrote it and there you go. So I I'm looking at this story I'm looking at this story and they interviewed three HBCU students and they're talking to them about, uh, y'all can go to my computer, I'm showing the story. They're talking to them about funding. I'm trying to figure out how to get this closed caption off, but it's not working. And so I'm watching the story and they're talking about the housing conditions and the protests at Howard University. And the whole story is about how Biden is not living up to his promises with the funds to HBCUs, okay? They talk about how they promised some $60 million in funding and the things that they need. And then, like right here, she talks to this Alabama a &M student. Go to this. Pull it up, please. Professors to offer different classes or more classes. We need better funding. We reached out to Howard University, and they said, in part, that they advertised additional housing for juniors and seniors and work hard to ensure those who... So... The brother from Alabama a and was saying they needed more professors, they need better equipment, things along those lines. And so I'm, I'm listening to the story, I'm watching, and then, um, and then the reporter, she's asking them about, well, Biden said this is going to be a priority, and what are your thoughts about that? And, and the student says this. And black people, period, in America have been given false promises on campaigns. I was more naive. I thought the promise would be kept. We all know how the game is played. It's so unfortunate to hear us say that's just how the game is played because this isn't a game. Do you have hope that the Biden administration will do right by HBCUs? I'll, I'll say yes. I will say yes. I'm going to say 
that the most hope that I have is in students. I have mixed feelings about it because I love optimism because we need people like that. Like we're still going through a pandemic. I really don't expect them to look at college students, especially just even put HBCU students on the focal point. I don't see it happening. Okay. Now, they say in the report, they reached out to the White House and the White House did not respond back to them. Okay. See, this is what I can't stand. I can't stand lazy ass reporting. I, I, I can't stand trifling reporting. I can't stand when you do a story and you're talking to three HBCU students. Now, God bless those students. But let's just be real honest. Those three students have absolutely no clue about what's happening in Washington, D.C. with funding. They don't. NBC News, Isabella Gutierrez, did she call the United Negro College Fund? Nope. Did she call the Third Grade Marshall Fund? Nope. Did she call the Congressional Black Caucus? Nope. Did she call anybody? Did she call Nafio, Leslie Baskerville? Nope. Who is the Third Grade Marshall Fund, the UNCF and Nafio? The three largest lobbyists for HBCUs in Washington, D.C. Who would know better about funding for HBCUs than Nafio, Thurgood Marshall Fund, and United Negro College Fund? But then they don't even call the Congressional Black Caucus. Okay, why should you call the Congressional Black Caucus? Well, could it be that CDC members on the House Education Committee should it be people like Congressman Jim Clyburn, who is in the Democrat House leadership? He's the whip. Kind of know what's going on, right? They call nobody. No facts, no details, no nothing. So black folks are out here retweeting this article, and they're saying, I saw it in the root. That's a black website. But all the root did was rewrite the NBC story. See, y'all, I've been telling y'all for years, one of the biggest problems with black, with black targeted media and black owned media, they don't call nobody. They rewrite some stuff in white media, slap their name on it, give it the veneer of blackness, and then we go, ooh, I saw it here, I saw it there, when all they're doing is ripping off somebody else's reporting and then making it seem like it's theirs. It was a total rewrite. Yeah. So, on Twitter yesterday, I lit that ass up with 20 tweets, putting the root and NBC News and this reporter on blast for shoddy reporting. Why? Because we've been covering this stuff. We've been showing y'all the real data. We've been having the experts on. Oh, if you click that root story, this is what comes up right now. Post not found. You know why? They took that shit down. And they took it down because I dragged that ass. Now, why did I drag him? This ain't about defending Biden and Harris. This is about facts. This is about why I keep telling y'all, stop listening to these other people who don't know shit about black people and trust people who are actual journalists. Because you know what I did? I text Congresswoman Alma Adams. Who is Alma Adams? She is only an HBCU graduate who's in the Congressional Black Caucus, who's the co-chair of the HBCU Caucus. I text Congressman Jim Clyburn, who is only an HBCU graduate, South Carolina State, who is the highest ranking African American in Congress. I hit up Michael Lomax, who leads the United Negro College Fund. I hit up Leslie Baskerville with Nafio. I hit up my frat brother, Dr. Walter Kimbrough, president of Villa University. Y'all, wasn't that hard? So, if everybody out here and y'all watching the rest of these people and they talk about HBCUs, what they not doing, 
and what we ain't got. Now, remember in the story, the young lady, and again, I'm not dissing her. She just don't know. She said, we in the middle of a pandemic, and they don't care uh, about uh, HBCUs and what's going on. Remember what she said? That's what she said. Again, I'm not dissing her because, y'all, she don't know. Please go to my computer. This, y'all, is a spreadsheet that Congressman Jim Clyburn sent me. What does it say at the top? COVID relief to HBCUs. Left-hand column, the first university is Alabama A&M, the one that brother was in. The first column, it says cap five forgiveness. That column shows you the loan forgiveness the federal government did, the Biden administration did for HBCUs. Look at the bottom right here. One billion, 603 million, 382,977 dollars and 29 cents. Y'all see the schools. Xavier, Winston-Salem State, Virginia State, Virginia Union, Tennessee State, Texas College, Spelman, on and on and on and on and on. Oh, let's now go to the CARES Act. This list, let me go ahead and zoom this in for y'all watching. This shows you right here, CARES Act, how much all of the HBCUs receive. Alabama A&M, 9.1 million. Alabama State, 6.2 million, and go on down, 4.3, 6.7, 6.5, 3.6, on and on and on. The CARES Act was passed under this administration. HBCUs received $352,770,880 as a result of the CARES Act. Y'all ain't done. Scroll over here. CARES Act 2, Alabama A&M, 17 million, Alabama State, 12 million, go on and 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 on. CARES Act 2, HBCUs received $578,925,495. Y'all ain't done. Scroll over to the CRRSAA Act. I don't even know what the hell that is. Uh, 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 Rodriguez, what would UNCF uh, bring him in, please? Uh, uh, Rodriguez, uh, what is that? What's um, uh, so what, what is that? So what you were just looking at, Roland, you talked about CARES Act. That was actually for March 2020. Then the second thing, the CRRSA, we call it SRSA. That was the December 2020 stimulus. You remember the bill yes. that on his way out, President Trump said he was going to sign it, and he said he wasn't going to sign it, and he ended up signing it? Right. It was that bill. Okay. Um, and so what, what So that, what that CRRSA, finding, hold on. Here we, I'm gonna, hold on, hold on. I'm going to go down, y'all. In the CRRSA 1, HBCUs got $583,873,621. Okay. Now, now let's pause right there. Go ahead. I'll tell you what that is. That's the pot of money that every college and university in the country got some of. But that's the part that just HBCUs got. Now you're going to go into the part two of SERSA, and that is money set aside just for HBCUs. Now out of that pot one, you remember here HBCUs were forgiving debt and forgiving student fees, right. and they were doing things for students that nobody else was doing, yep. even though bigger schools um, with bigger endowments and more resources, such as such as Mahari giving students ten thousand dollars and such as that. Okay, exactly. So that's coming out of that first portion that you're mentioning, and then separate from that, that second portion under the same name, Sursa, that's the HBCU set aside. Okay, hold and up, hold HBCU up. We going there. Aside. Y'all see, mm -hmm. nineteen point eight, thirteen point six, seventeen point seven. Let's go on down. Let's go on down. So that HBCU set aside money, 
comes out to 852 million. Eight hundred and twenty-eight thousand nine hundred and seventy-eight yeah, dollars. Yeah, darn, darn near a billion dollars. And so that's money that we made the case to Congress. Um, HBCU advocates, you mentioned Leslie Baxterville, Thurgood Marshall, United Negro College Fund, Michael Lomax. We made the case to Congress that if Black people are disproportionately impacted, you want to call us essential workers, but you're basically saying that we are more exposed. We have more pre-existing conditions. We're more impacted than we should therefore get more of the stimulus money because we're more impacted. That means that the students at our schools, their parents are still in harm's way. They're, they're more likely to die. They're more likely to be infected. And so the schools where we are attending in disproportionate percentages should get more money. And so, so that's the case we made. And you see that darn near billion dollars. What, there is, what is ARP Act? ARP, what's that? That's the American Rescue Plan. Now, this is the first signature achievement of the Biden administration. And so what you find in the American Rescue Plan, ARP, is American Rescue Plan is roughly about the size of CARES Act from March 2020, plus the SRSA or the December 2020 stimulus that President Trump was going to sign and wasn't going to sign. Then he ended up signing okay. it. You okay. basically add those two packages together and you get what President Hold on. Biden came out the gate with. We're going to scroll down. So a ARP Act, 25.3, 18, 20, 15. So going down, when I get to the bottom, 1 billion, 24 million, 804,301 dollars. So the first- and you're just getting started. So the first major bill that President Biden signed, this is not the, the federal government budget, this is a separate bill, was $1 right. billion dollars for HBCUs. Now, was And that's just the first part of it, because that's out of the part where all colleges and universities each got a piece. So places like UNC Chapel Hill got a piece, and places like Emory got a piece. But out of that piece that all colleges and universities got, that was the HBCU total. And then in addition to that, again, because the disproportionate impact that the pandemic has on black people, we made the case for the A2 that you're about to go into now, and, and, and above that one billion that you And, and the AP uh, projected, was that Build Back Better? Was that BBB? No, you're still, you're still in the American Rescue Plan. Okay, so We're talking about actual law. We're not talking about anything proposed yet. So, our at projected, y'all see, 34.6, 23 point, going down, going down, going down, going down. It comes out to one billion four hundred and eighty seven million four hundred and fifty three thousand seven hundred and thirty seven dollars sixty three cents. So so Roland, I want to help put this in perspective. I've been doing this work for HBCU lobbying advocacy, making the case for these schools to Congress for a good bit of time now and HBCUs uh, before um, the last four or five years in legislation, we're never in the same sentence with the word billion. And if you look back at the stimulus that happened during President Obama's time, which gives you an apples to apples comparison on stimulus packages, you were not gonna find that HBCUs had a particular set aside. And so what you're seeing now is these schools are rising to the point where they are garnering more attention from public policy leaders and decision makers in Washington and so that they're not fighting for scraps, right? But they're starting to get real money and investment, the kind that they've deserved since their inception 200 years ago. Now, folks, I want y'all now to look at this here, this last column. Mm -hmm. It shows you all of those bills broken down by how much each one of the schools got. Alabama A <laughs> and M got 207.4 million. Mm -hmm. Alabama State, 232.3 million. It's just go, let me just scroll on down. Um, you got this 108 right there. That's Clark Atlanta. Clark Atlanta got 108.3. Keep going. Y'all see that big number? 307. That's Florida A&M. Got 307.2 million. 184, 111, keep going, all these numbers, you see that, y'all, I'm showing you actual numbers, okay, actual numbers, 
Big number right there. Out of all of these bills, HBCUs got six billion four hundred and eighty-four million thirty-nine thousand nine hundred and eighty-nine dollars and ninety-two cents. Now, so let go ahead. So let's let's put everything in perspective because the question that everyone wants to ask, and it's really kind of unfair, and I'll tell you why, is which administration was better for HBCUs? That's what they all want to say. Now, by the numbers, if you're only going to look during coronavirus pandemic time and you're only going to look at these major pieces of stimulus legislation, you saw what President Trump and that Congress did in March 2020 plus December 2020 basically equals just about what President Biden did in his one bill the American Rescue Plan in March of 2021. It took those two bills, the first two, together under Trump to get what President Biden came out the gate swinging and achieved early in his administration. So all this talk about they haven't been successful and they haven't done anything meaningful is just really some inside the beltway chatter. Now see, Um, now I'm about to really mess y'all up. I'm about to really mess y'all up because I'm about to show you, really, in terms of y'all can understand, apples to apples. Mm-hmm. State, P, state HBCUs, HBCUs that are public institutions, they are largely funded by the state government. You're it is not the responsibility of the federal government to be funding state colleges. It's the state. Let me show y'all the deal. Go to my computer. Take Alabama A&M. Alabama A&M, state appropriations, fiscal year 20, was $46.7 million. $46.7 million. They got $1.1 million in state grants. So the total funding for Alabama A&M was $47.8 million in state funding. Listen to me closely, y'all. $47.8 million. That brother who was on an NBC story, he was saying, we need more professors, more buildings. Y'all, the state's supposed to fund that. Look how much Alabama A&M got in federal COVID relief. $207.5 million. That means that Alabama A&M got four times as much money from the federal government in COVID relief funding than they got from their own state. That means that out of the, the federal COVID relief money, it would take Alabama A&M four years to get $207.5 million. That's what they got in COVID relief. Go on down. Alabama A&M, 54, Alabama State, 54.9 in total state funding. How much from federal COVID relief? $232.3 million. Bishop State got total funding, $15.8 million from the state. COVID relief, $55 million. Gadsden State got $25.4 million in total state funding, $35 million in COVID funding. On and on. Going down, University of Arkansas. Look at Delaware State, University of District of Columbia, Florida A&M. Florida A&M got $136.9 million from the state of Florida. They got $307.2 million in federal COVID relief money. Keep going down and y'all see Grambling got $18.9 million from the state of Louisiana. They got $184.6 million in COVID relief money. Keep going. Southern Southern University of New Orleans, Shreveport, Southern University in Baton Rouge, $29.3 million in state funding, $132 million in COVID funding. Alcorn State, keep going. Jackson State, $44 million from state, $120 million in COVID relief money. Y'all, what I'm trying to show y'all, look at the numbers. The numbers don't lie. These are actual numbers. This is a spreadsheet that we got from Congressman Jim Clyburn's office that is detailing the exact numbers. Tennessee State, 63.2 million from the state, 
115.5 million from the federal government. Now, the point I'm laying out here for folks, um, uh, Rodriguez, is who, who don't, again, don't fully understand the data, don't understand the data. Okay, these are public institutions. But now, explain to people who don't understand why they're not seeing private HBCUs on this list. So private HBCUs are not supposed to be funded by the state. You mentioned uh, Alabama State um, and all kinds of other HBCUs whose names you know that have basically the state mentioned in them. They're funded by the state where they reside. And um, so the private institutions like my alma mater, Morehouse College, like Spelman College, like Dillard University, like Xavier University, they're not affiliated with the state and they don't get money from the state by and large. Um, so the federal government helps all HBCUs, but the states, they are supposed to help those entities that they have uh, procured. Those are institutions that they're supposed to caretake, just like the major teaching research intensive institutions um, that are the flagships of that state, the state takes care of them. And part of the problem um, over the years with HBCUs is that states have not taken care of their state funded HBCUs right. the same way they've taken care of their, what they call flagship. All of those institutions should be flagships, including those that are excellent at educating black Americans. Okay, what about federal government, okay? It, is the federal government precluded from giving money to private HBCUs? No. The federal government is the number one funder in the country for all HBCUs, period. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need you to repeat that for the people who were not paying attention. The federal government is the number one funder of all HBCUs in the country. And without the federal government, there's not a single one of the 100 plus historically black colleges and universities that can survive at all. So... When you see this NBC News story that The Root then rewrote, when you see the, new, the AP story, the Newsweek story saying 45 billion was taken, no, explain to people that the initial bill that President Biden, Vice President Harris put up was 11, 10, 11 trillion dollars. It got whittled so down to 1.75. That means 90% of what they suggested get funded got taken out. What you find is a lot of naivete and, and people don't want to go into the level of detail that they should. So you look at President Biden and Vice President Harris proposals. They had two. There was one for infrastructure and there was one for families. When you put together what they had in infrastructure plus what they had in the families plan or the human infrastructure, when you put them together, you had a commitment to historically black colleges and universities that no other president had ever made. So Roland, you look back at the history of presidents of the United States, and you're gonna find largely that in their budgets, they pretty much proposed for HBCUs whatever they got out of Congress last year. No president really has ever taken a proactive stance to say, I'm writing my budget the way I want to, and I'm gonna add a plus up for HBCUs, and I dare you, Congress, not to pass it. It's never happened. Now, None you, of the four to five people before him and have always, ever done that. But President Biden is the first and only president in history. When he wrote his budget for fiscal year 2021, he plussed up the HBCU programs because he talked to the HBCU groups before he put his budget out. And he asked, what do you guys want? And he wrote plus ups for HBCU programs in his budget. Now, I'm not talking about the COVID package. I'm talking about fiscal year 2021 annual appropriations. The president puts out the budget first. He plus those programs up in his budget. And I'm here to tell you, Roland, no president had ever plus those programs up like that, ever. No president, including the 44th. No president had ever plussed up those programs like that, Ever. They usually do what they call um, just taking the last fiscal year, copy and pasting that and putting that in the president's budget. This president, for the major program, we call it Title III, 
Title III of the uh, Higher Education Act, which focuses in on strengthening institutions um, that have a disproportionate number of un underserved students like HBCUs. This president put in a plus up of $100 million in one single fiscal year in that program. And Roland, if they pass the appropriations bills as they're written, which they're still waiting for Congress to do, and they have a deadline of mid next month to do it. Right. If they pass it, that one program will be increased by over $85 million. And that is because you for once in the history of America had an American president willing to put the plus up in his budget. Now, then you also have to add Roland because you know people like Alma Adams and you know people like Barbara Lee and people like Sanford Bishop. Those are the unsung heroes in this process, now, see, I was, both in terms of- And I was about to get there. Jim Clyburn. Yeah, I was about to get all, there because I got some, see, I like calling out people. I got some fool named Renee Stevens on YouTube, Rolling State Captain for them white folks, no idiot. The president can propose one thing, but Congress can always remove it. It's the black folks in the House who ensure it stays in. So when people and see not him, just them. so when folks say, oh, the black, Booker, caucus, the black Caucus ain't doing nothing, uh, guess what, folks? Cory Booker, Raphael Warnock, John Ossoff, you, you have to add all of these people together. And I'll, I'll, I'll really help break some news for you, Roland. Go ahead. Is that HBCUs get a lot of bipartisan support in Congress as quiet as it's killed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and so because you look at them located in the, in the American South, their House members are largely right. Republican. And so we have to bring them into the coalition and walk with them along with the Democrats, like a Sanford Bishop that went to Morehouse and knows what that school means. We have to bring all of them together on right. both sides of the aisle and get these kinds of things accomplished. Because if we didn't bring them with us, they tell us that the money wasn't going to be there for us. But because our coalition has both Democrats and Republicans in it, we're getting things done and we're finally starting to see increases that these schools have really deserved since the mid 1800s. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Rodriguez, I appreciate it. I, 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 wanted, I, I wanted to walk through this because I'm tired of our people falling for bad reporting and not having actual data. And here's the piece, folks. You see, we, look, we challenged President Obama when it came to HBCU funding as well. This ain't, this ain't about Biden, about Democrats. This is about our institutions getting what we deserve, and that's what matters. Uh, we appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Take care. I want to bring up my panel, Dr. Julian Malvo, Dean, College of Ethnic Studies, uh, California State University, L.A., Dr. Omakongo Dabinga, Professorial Lecturer, School of International Service, American University, Law Victoria Burke, writer with the NMPA and the GRIO. Julian, I want to start with you, President Emeritus, the Prairie Emerita of Bennett College. I mean, this is, I was so pissed watching that NBC News story and then watching that crap on the GRIO, on the route, which I'm glad they took the story down, because all it takes is picking the damn phone up. Oh, hell, they could have went to whitehouse.gov, typed in HBCU, and would have pulled up the sheet that they put out uh, on uh, uh, January 20th and the one they put out in October. And, and my problem is when black people see this, they go, see, see, they ain't doing shit for HBCUs. They promised us, and we ain't got no money. You know, Roland, that I saw the same piece on NBC. I saw it a couple of times because they had it on Peacock, then they had it on another platform. It was, as you said, it was shoddy reporting. It was all over the place. If a journalism student sent me that piece, I would have given them an F minus, if you could, because you're, one young person is talking about buildings. The other young lady is talking about Howard University's dormitories. Um, it, I mean, it was just all over the place. It seemed almost like a hit piece on the Biden administration from a perspective of saying they haven't done enough. The, the reporter needs, if not fired, they need to have the child start covering uh, street crossings or something, because it was really a poorly done piece. But the fact is that we, President Biden has done a whole lot more than President Obama did. Uh, we, and I was- Then Obama, <laughs> then Trump, then Bush, then Clinton. I'm sorry, I mean, go ahead. No, you, you're absolutely right. And, uh, but President Biden has done a lot more than his predecessors, any of his predecessors had done. And I think that that's the influence of Kamala Harris, who of course is- And black voters and the pressure black people said, Absolutely. you got to do something. And, and, and Cedric Richmond, 
who I believe is an HBCU grad, and of course, uh, Jim Clyburn, Congressman Clyburn, has always there in the cut. And I must tell you, as you lift up Alma Adams, former Bennett professor for nearly 40 years, um, she and I retired from Bennett College at the same time. Got it. She Got is it. indefatigable around issues of uh, HBCUs. Her caucus is bicameral and bipartisan. Yep. So yep. she's that, a, that, 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 that HBCU caucus. Lauren, Congressman Bobby Scott, Virginia. Huge, huge advocate as well. But this is the thing, Lauren, that we fight all the time. The NBC News can broadcast that story everywhere. And guess what? Black, I'm going to go ahead and say this. It's a whole bunch of blue check people who will quickly retweet an NBC News story and never retweet something we report here on Roller Martin Unfiltered. I saw all these folks retweeting the NBC News story on Lauren Smith Fields, and I'm like, uh, y'all know we talked to the family attorney on Friday in a 23-minute yeah. report. Y'all can also share that if y'all want to. But this is these type of stories. And then when The Root, a black targeted website, rewrites some BS from NBC News, it just reinforces the misinformation. Yeah, there's very few media organizations that have the uh, th that have the reporters that will do the original reporting on something and really call their, like you said, they're just doing rewrites. And unfortunately, we're in an era of clickbait in an age of misinformation. So it's really important that people actually go and do original reporting. Uh, and, you know, no offense to Alma Adams and Jim Clyburn and everybody else, but Rodriguez left out the most important person who you just mentioned, who is the chairman of education and workforce, Bobby Scott, because without Bobby Scott and his staff writing the line items in for these numbers, it doesn't happen. It's yeah. Congress that appropriates the money. Uh, you know, we do have, and, and uh, uh, you know, it was just mentioned, of course, Senator Richmond, the connection there, but without Congress appropriating that type of money and agreeing to that appropriation, you know, I know a lot of pressure is on Joe Biden. Everybody keeps mentioning Joe Biden and wanting to criticize Joe Biden. Obviously, you need a president that's willing, but you need Congress to appropriate that cash. That's right. And, and by the way, there are billions and billions of dollars in Build Back Better, okay? And uh, those- Well, well then first of all, that's- that, that, and, and look, our, our, our job now, Lauren, Build Back Better didn't, didn't get passed, okay? So which means right. our job now is to say, all right, Biden, the Democrats, y'all had all this HBCU stuff in Build Back Better, come up with some other bill to put the money in there. Right. For HBCUs, though, Build Back Better, of course, is huge. They're going to try to pass it in pieces. And once again, you're going to see Congressman Scott be the one who has to line item all of these billions and billions to get that through. Right. Their staff, that's the staff that is pushing all of that through. So, right. Uh, uh, the most important player in this actually is Bobby Scott. Yeah, I mean, but they, but but, so but I, people say HBCUs don't do it. I mean, I'm sorry that, that CBC members don't do anything. You have a CBC it's a lie. member, Bobby Scott, doing is the quarterback of all of this money. So uh, I'm a Congo. It's interesting. I'm, uh, go to my computer again, y'all. Six point four billion. Six billion mm -hmm. four hundred eighty-four million thirty-nine thousand nine hundred eighty-nine dollars and ninety-two cents. The president can propose. He can pontificate all day. The Constitution states any appropriations right. starts in the House, not the Senate. So for all the people who say CBC ain't shit, they ain't doing shit, you do not get this $6.4 billion unless the CDC fights for it. Absolutely. Look, man, I, I taught three classes at American University today, and I just sat down for a half-hour class on this stuff, and... I've been schooled, man, and it's amazing. People always want to come at the CBC first before they go to anybody else. Sure. And one of the things that really bothers me is that I've heard Biden speak about this. I've heard Vice President Harris, but I feel like some of the, when we talk about some of the messaging issues that they have, I don't know if this sounds petty or something, but part of their communication seems, man, they need to actively go after these folks who are putting out this misinformation and I would say disinformation like you've just done. Because these pieces, NBC, this is a hit piece. People are looking at any opportunity to go at Biden and his black agenda. And look, you, like you said, you talk good. I mean, if you do good, I'm gonna talk about you. You do bad, I'm gonna talk about you. 
you are as critical as Biden as you are praiseworthy when he does things worthy of praise. And this is one of them. And all of the CBC leaders who have led this need to be commended, but the Biden administration needs to do a better job at hitting these types of organizations, the NBCs of the world, the roots of the world, putting out this disinformation because he can't come at it. Vice President Harris can't come at it. But that communications team got to do a better job, a better job of checking this stuff and before, on a daily basis. And before I go to break, Lip, to your particular point there, and I appreciate the White House sending me this, but this <laughs> release that they sent me is a perfect example of what's a waste of paper. <laughs> they sent me Biden-Harris investments in HBCUs yielding sweet fruit. And they go on in here, and this is the biggest mistakes that these people make. They put in here more than, than $5.8 billion to HBCUs. The investments enable these colleges and universities to shift from classroom and laboratory-centered learning to virtual learning, blah, 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 blah. And then you go on, and then you go on, and more verbiage, 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 and more verbiage. Then they get down to HBCUs, produce this, produce that, produce this, produce that. Then they got more verbiage, more verbiage, more verbiage, more verbiage. Now we got some quotes. We got more verbiage. We see unprecedented 5.8 billion again and more verbiage. Okay, so here's my problem, okay? And I got it, I got it. And I'm not, I'm not slamming Leslie and Sonia. They got the names at the bottom of this. Here's, <laughs> but here's the problem, here's the problem. The White House, the White House sent me to this. You, Joe Madison says that you gotta put it where the goats can get it. Right. That's right. You got, you got to say, mm -hmm. you got to say, for example, Alabama a and got 48 million from the state, 207 million from the federal government. You got mm -hmm. to break that thing down. This don't do it, y'all. I'm just letting let y'all know. It's a his historic investment in HBCUs. They don't mean nothing. Headline. They don't mean nothing. They don't mean you nothing. Know, you I got to. Protest release didn't go to J school. Uh, no, 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 no. I, 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 but it's a no, no. It's a press release, and I get it. And again, I love, I love Leslie, but Leslie, I'm gonna call you when the show's over. But you got, you got to make that thing plain, so people understand. That's what I'm trying to get people to understand. So for everybody out here, I gotta go to my next story, but I, I'm trying to explain to all these people out here. This is not about, oh man, you trying to protect the Biden administration. No, I'm trying to protect facts. And so right now. Y'all can go out with the real facts now. I put the spreadsheet. I'm going to put it on social media. So everybody out there, oh, no, man, oh, no. You got the actual hardcore numbers, so I'm not playing this game again, and I am going to pull up the data of what the Biden folks had in the Build Back Better plan. I have it right here, but I'm doing it another day. And I'm going to say, now we have a target of what now to fight for. Because it didn't get passed. Cause now you gotta know what you're fighting. Hey, guys, I hold my unfiltered video in just one moment. to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice 
to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. We support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this is the difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I got to defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Rolling was amazing on that. Stay hey, Black, I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?